Okay, hello Internet. Uh, this here is a demo of the Zoom uh, MS70 CDR. The uh, reason for this video is that I have never seen one. And also because uh, I keep telling people how good this uh, instrument sounds and, or effect I suppose, and uh, have nothing to back it up. So I'll get right to the point. Uh, the uh, test scenario here is we've got a uh, Moog Minotaur, which is... Uh, just playing a two-bar pattern. It's set on like a kind of a, well, you'll hear it. And then I'm just going to go through the effects and uh, maybe narrate, maybe not. I'm not sure what it's going to go like. Uh, uh, some background on the MS-70 CDR. Stereo in, stereo out. Here, let's do this. Stereo in, stereo, stereo out. It does have a battery uh, option. It also runs off one of those um, boss... Can you see it back there? It runs off one of those Boss power adapters. They're kind of, I don't know if it's standard or not, but I feel like uh, uh, this one's a one spot anyway. Um, the CDR has lots and lots and lots of um, different effects you can put in there. They fall into these categories, uh, chorus, uh, delay, reverb, and then the dynamic slash filter. So like, uh, I don't really play with those that much, but there's an EQ in there and there's a uh, pitch like a, a octave kind of pedal in there. So um, it focuses on chorus delay and reverb, thus the CDR, but they offer you a couple other uh, toys to play uh, with if that's what you want. Um, let me bring down my studio lighting again. If you uh, see right here, I've got the, the you know foot pedal switch. It's a guitar pedal after all. But around it is a kind of a joystick. So... You can left and right on the joystick to go through the different effects you have. And you can turn them on and off one by one. So it's a multi-effect pedal in that it has a bunch of uh, effects all in a line. There's also these three uh, knobs here, one, two, and three. Sorry for the unnecessary zoom, but uh, that's, uh, that's how the iPad is set up here. So... If you want to, as um, you, you see, I'm, I'm scrolling left and right. You're going through the effects, number three, number four, number five. I'm going to ditch uh, number six because it has a, a sort of a maximum amount of D uh, DSP available. So uh, that leftmost knob, that you can turn them and you can push them down. I'm pushing this one down, and then I'm hitting enter. Now, if you have muscle memory and you're getting kind of um, familiar with this thing, don't do that. Uh, because sometimes uh, pushing a button down is exit, sometimes it's the center button, sometimes it's the left button. I'm going to um, show you one other feature since we're already in this menu, which is to change the order of the effect chain. So you turn the knob, you select effect chain, you hit go. Then you turn the knob until you get to the effect you want. And say you want the chorus here, you pick it up and you put it down. So coming back here, so now the chorus is in a different place. And then we'll delete that one. And then we'll delete that one. That's my dog in the background. Say hi. Hi, dog. Oop, there it is. I just had to hold it in longer. Uh, so there they are, the chorus delay, the reverb. Uh, if you want to add an effect, you uh, do that thing. You hold it in longer. You hit the top and the bottom. You hold it in longer than I did. And you hit... Uh, uh, reverb or let's go see what the dynamic and filters are this is a noise reduction so if you're a guitarist I think this is relevant to you I'm not a guitarist this is all about uh, synths synthesizers today which is why I'm using a Moog Minotaur uh, here's an EQ I'm using the little uh, joystick to toggle through these so EQ a bass EQ uh, line select more on that in a second and this is the equ equivalent of no effect uh, the line select is, I was hoping it would have a wet dry, and it doesn't have a wet dry. It has um, these two knobs, EFX and out. Out is just the level. And then the effects is, it's not a wet dry like effect level, it's just the volume of the effect. So I'm going to come back to the main screen here, and we're going to see where I ended up with all this. We'll delete this guy. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, now I've done it. <laughs> okay. And uh, let's get to the to the point. Um, 
I'm going to select a couple of the delays and let you hear them, and then I'm going to take the effect out, and then uh, you can hear what that sounds like. Okay. So, uh, this is, you see the orange light is the effect in, the orange light is the effect out. This is just the raw sound. And uh, I know you're going to get tired of hearing that, but uh, that's the brakes. So there's these three knobs that I mentioned. Those correspond to the three knobs on the screen. There's also uh, usually more pages. So as you start turning them, time A, time B, so this is uh, what, a dual delay. As you start turning them, you'll, you'll see the rest of the screen, and you see tap, edit, and page. So tap right now, I want it tap at 70. You see that number above tap is the, the time for that delay. I can't figure out what that refers to. Uh, I know that if I, if I bring it in at 375, that that's uh, what I like in a delay, and I think that's 316th notes. No, uh, what's that called? Dotted 16th note? A 16th and a half. Um, anyway, so uh, I do not know. But the tap tempo is the tap tempo, and then these numbers are relative to that. And then here's the feedback. Uh, so these are the ones that are available from the front screen without having to go through pages. Uh, when you go to the second page and then the third page, uh, these will be different on every e each of the effects. So I'm just going to take the default on this one. I'll turn it on, let it go. Well, that was epic. Uh, let's do another one. I don't know what this is. Uh, a lot of these are models, so if you're a guitarist, you may recognize these from Guitar Land, but I'm not. I'll, I'll turn the knobs on this one since it uh, seems to do stuff. You see I turned it off there before uh, it was done uh, done repeating. I think that's the tail setting here. Uh, let's find out. So it's on. Yeah, that's the tail setting. They don't all, you know, all the delays are modeled after different things, so they don't all have the same settings. Uh, but that one has the tail setting. Oh, uh, and just for comparison for AB, we'll do a dry one through the pedal. And then I'm going to do a wet one right now. That didn't sound good. So as far as I'm concerned with this thing in bypass, uh, it sounds pretty good. Um, it's probably a bridge too far to take the pedal out of the loop altogether. Eh, maybe not. Um, but um, as far as I'm concerned, when it's in bypass, it sounds as good as it does without the synth there. And not all not all guitar pedals can say that, which is why why I love this thing. Uh, I'll just put this one on, and then we'll go through a bunch of these with a lot less talking. Thank you. 
We're going to just take a moment of uh, silence and thank Zoom for that one. Good Lord.
I'm going to stop that there and, um, oh, not completely there, two more, and then uh, move on to some choruses. The super exotic ones don't really do anything for me. This is the uh, noise reduction input. The EQ actually works. I may as well, I'm going to use the bass one. Uh, we'll do this. So the EQ does stuff. Um, the line select we already talked about. I don't know why that's there. And uh, I like the Corona Chorus. So let's just go ahead and do that one. Uh, I find in a live setting that sometimes the chorus is more effective than the reverb. It, uh, uh, for, for, for my purposes at least, it uh, keeps the punch, but gives you that sort of um, fatness. Let's listen to this one.
without getting all uh, blurry and adding the uh, extra stuff in there. Oh, speaking of stuff, here's, uh, here's one. They're not all winners. Uh, vibrato, phaser, sure, phaser. Sounds like a phaser. Uh, and then remember, recall that you can uh, stack these up so you can put, uh, you know, a pitch shifter and then a delay and then an EQ. You have an amount of uh, signal processing available to you. Um, it's somewhere around five effects. It really depends. The delays and the reverb seem to be more uh, taxing. Okay, so that's the, uh, let's see, we can just go through these while I'm standing here. And we just wrapped around. So that is uh, probably, I think it's 70 effects. It might be, I really should read up on these things before I do these videos, but this is about the sound. Uh, I think the upshot is, I like the CDR. Uh, there is a hack online that explains how to, uh, I'll show you the screen, that sh explains how to, if you're a guitarist, you're probably used to this where you, um, say like, oh, I want this effect for sound song one, and I want this effect for song two, and th then you can just use the um, foot button to toggle between them during a gig. I'm a synth player, so this thing sits on the desk with me, and I do uh, what I showed you before, which is add, um, you know, add effects one by one, and uh, to sit here and turn the knobs. That's, that's how I use it. Um, I never found a way to uh, control the knobs remotely from a controller, uh, it does have a USB jack in there that's apparently for uh, identified just for firmware, but there's a hack online that lets you um, toggle through those uh, the presets, basically, or w whichever your favorites are. Uh, questions in the comments. Thanks for listening.